All right, and welcome to 1-3, Irrational Roots. Now, we wanna talk about what an irrational number is. So, a rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction, but an irrational number cannot be written as a fraction. And the reason is because it will always come out as an infinite, non-repeating, I suppose that should be one word, but we'll make it two here, infinite non-repeating decimal. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's take the square root of 18 for example. If you type the square root of 18 into your calculator, you're gonna get 4.24264, and you might think that that's actually the answer, but it's not. This is actually just the start of this. This number could, and I don't know if this is technically accurate, this is where the calculator is cutting it off, but this could go on to be 3, 8, 9, 4, 1, dot, dot, dot. It continues forever and with no pattern. So we need a way to write the square root of 18 in a way that we can actually work with it and have an exact number. And so how do we simplify an irrational root? Well, I'm about to go through 10 examples. Do you need to watch all 10 examples? No, but if you watch all 10 examples and you write down the notes for all 10 examples, you will see every single type of irrational root. This will wind up being one of the longest videos that I do, but one of the most necessary ones if you want to fully understand how to simplify irrational roots. So let's take a look at the square root of 18. What we want to do is break it down into a factor tree. So ask yourself, what two things multiply to be 18? And a good question, is, is the number even or odd? Well, we know since it ends in an 8, it is in fact even, and so it can be divided by 2. 18 divided by 2 would give us 9, and most of us know that 9 breaks down into 3 times 3. Now, here's the key. We said with square roots in our previous video, there's actually a 2 right there, and it's telling us we're looking for groups of 2. That means two numbers that are exactly the same. And so... I circle those numbers. Now whatever numbers you circle, whatever group size you circle, this number right here gets to escape the radical or it gets to go outside the radical. So here's my radical and the 3 escapes. But notice the 2 doesn't have another 2 to pair up with and so it is stuck inside. Okay, let's take a look at the square root of 20. What two things can this break down into? Well, remember, if a number ends in a zero, it can always be divided by 10. And we know that 20 divided by 10 would give us two. Well, what does 10 break down into? Well, most of us know this. It ends in a zero. So in this case, we can't divide 10 by 10, but we know that zero is an even number. So it can definitely be divided by two, and 10 divided by two is five. Well, I circle my two numbers that are my group size of two, and so I draw my radical, and of course, whatever we circle goes to the outside. Now remember this five does not have a partner. It doesn't have someone it can escape with, and so the five goes back to the inside. All right? I would encourage you to pause the video and take these notes, and I'm actually going to um, erase these after every two examples. Okay, so let's take a look at example three, the square root of 17, and example four, the square root of 15. Now these are two special cases. Let's take a look at 17. Can 17 be divided by any number other than one or 17? And the answer is no. And in fact, 17 is what we call a prime number. It really can't be broken down. Since 17 can't be broken down, the square root of 17 simply simplifies to the square root of 17. Sometimes these things cannot change. All right, let's take a look at the square root of 15. We know it ends in a five, so therefore it can be divided by five. And 15 divided by five would be three. Now remember, it's a square root. We're looking for group sizes of two. Do you see two numbers that are the same? No. And since you don't, 
we actually, we broke these down by dividing, so we just put them back together by multiplying, and it turns out the square root of 15 is just the square root of 15. All right, moving on to our next two examples. Okay, here we have example five, and I'm actually gonna do example five twice, and I'll show you why. So here's example five one way, and here's gonna be example five another. Let's say you look at 32, and you see that two, and you say, you know what, I know it can be divided by two. 32 divided by two gives us 16. And you're like, wait a second, I know 16 is a perfect square. That breaks down into 4 and 4. Have we found our group of 2? Yeah, absolutely. We don't have to break down the 4s any further. We can just circle them right now. And we know that wherever we find our pair of numbers, that goes to the outside. So put a 4 on the outside. And our 2, which cannot be broken down any further, has to stay on the inside. Now, one quick note. A lot of you might be wondering, Mr. Hastings, why am I not dealing with that 16? Well, 16 is not at the bottom of the factor tree. Remember, 16 gets split up into 4 and 4. When we deal with this 4 and this 4, then we are effectively dealing with the 16. So if it's not at the bottom or it's being split up further, it has no bearing on our final answer. Now, it tells you we do 32 twice. What if you're really good at math? And you're like, wait a second, I know 32 breaks down into eight and four. And then you're like, well, I know four breaks down into two and two. And I know eight breaks down into four and two. And I know four breaks down into two and two. Well, check it out. We've broken down 32 so far that we've broken it down to one, two, three, four, five twos. But we're looking for groups of two. So I can circle this pair. I could circle this pair, but what about this two? Does he have a friend that we can circle him with? No, and so what we'll do is we'll write our radical, and of course, this two can go right there, and this two can go right here. Both sets get to escape, but the question is, how do you think we should put them back together? Well, if we've divided everything to break it apart, then to put it back together, we have to multiply. And of course, this 2 stays on the inside of the radical. Now we know 2 times 2 would give us 4 square roots of 2, and you'll see it's the exact same answer that we got right there. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to example 6. Alright, example 6, we'll take 48, and let's break down 48. Well, I know it ends in an 8, which is an even number. So it can be divided by 2, and 48 divided by 2 is 24. Now I want you to start kind of like, let's get these gears a turning. If the last number is a 4, well, that doesn't really make sense. We know that 24 can be divided by 4, and 24 divided by 4 would be 6. Now can 4 break down further? Yeah, it breaks down to 2 and 2. And what about 6? Well, that breaks down into 2 and 3. Notice, even though this 2 is way up the, at the top where we wrote it, it's not breaking down any further. It is technically at the bottom of the factor tree. So we can circle our pair of 2s. We can circle our pair of 2s. And much like in that last example, those drop out. We have 2 times 2 on the outside. And this 3 goes to the inside. So 2 times 2 will give us 4 square roots of 3. All right, example 7. Now, for example 7, we're going to really pick up the pace here because we're no longer looking at square roots. We're going to be looking at cube roots. And so we're no longer looking for groups of 2. Now we're looking for groups of 3. Excellent. So what can 24 be broken down into? Well, over here I used 4 and 6, but this time Let's use 8 and 3. And what does 8 break down into? Well, 4 and 2. And we know that 4 breaks down into 2 and 2. So check it out. We're looking for three numbers that are the exact same. And we actually have them. 1, 2, 3, 2's. Now look, 
the one part where I think a lot of students get confused is over here, for example, six, we circle two numbers, but we only bring out one. Here we circle three numbers, but we only bring out one number. Well, that's because you're looking for what group of three gets to escape because it's a cube root. A cube root is asking what number times itself three times gets you to that number. And the answer to that question was two. Now here, our three goes to the inside. And don't forget to put the little bitty three outside the root symbol because we have to indicate this is two cube roots of three. Moving on. And I believe this is example number eight. Seven, eight, yeah. Here we have the cube root of 81. And then for example nine, we'll go ahead and do the cube root of 18. A very popular number today. Now let's talk about the cube root of 81. Most of you know 81 as a perfect square. What two numbers multiply to be 81? Well, that would be nine and nine. And check it out. If we were inside a square root, we could circle our pair and be done, but we're not. We're looking for three numbers that are the same. So we break down nine into three and three, and three and three, and check it out. We have a group of three right here. So we write three cube roots of three. And remember that three doesn't have two other partners that it gets to escape with, so it goes back inside the radical. Now let's look at example nine. We know from our previous uh, example number one, this broke down into nine and two and three and three. Question for you. Do you see three numbers that are exactly the same? No. And if you don't, we can't simplify it. So this cube root of 18 is simply the cube root of 18. That's easy. Let's move on to our last and final example. And this one will be example number 10. Okay, so here we have the cube root of 2000. And you might be thinking, Mr. Hastings, this is a large, large number. And you're right. But I've given you some cool little tricks to help you break it down. So trick number one, it ends in a zero. So it can be divided by 10. 2000 divided by 10 is 200. Guess what? 200 ends in a zero. So it can be divided by 10. 200 divided by 10 is 20. Now, every single one of you knows two numbers that multiply to be 20, but let's just use our trick again. If you look at that zero, it breaks down into 10 and two. And notice inside a cube root, we're looking for three numbers that are exactly the same. Yeah, we could go ahead and break these tens down further, but it doesn't matter we already have a group of three. So of course, 10 cube roots of two will be our final answer. I know this was a longer video, but I really hope that these 10 examples helped you out. Go ahead, go work through this. And if you get stuck, come back and try to find an example that looks like the one you're stuck on. See you guys in our next section.